we have the background, which is a stock photograph, on top of which we wish to composite this illustration of uh, the sorcerer, a black and white illustration. Normally we use the move tool to move a layer within a document. And you can see here we're moving it within the document bounds. We can also move any layer from one document into another document by dragging it into the tabs over the background. And when we let go, the sorcerer has been placed on top of the background in its own layer. Now if you look in the corners of that layer, you should see the transform handles. If you don't see these handles, it's because you haven't enabled the show transform checkbox. So we want that on so that when we select a layer, we can move it around and we can grab the corner handles to scale, to resize this to roughly the right scale and we can position it uh, in the comp and once it's in the right position, we can go to um, the, the commit transform and check that. After which we want to turn off the transform handles temporarily and zoom in so that we can have a look at what needs to be fixed. So looking at it now, we have to exercise our uh, artistic eyes and try to note what we need to change. The first thing is there's no shadow, so he looks like he's floating. The second problem is the colors don't match because the sorcerer is black and white and the background uh, is in color. We need to fix that. And finally, you notice the perspective is also wrong because uh, of that curved bottom edge of his robe. He, he looks like we are standing high up looking down on him, whereas that's not the perspective of the background. So let's fix all these problems one by one. We start with the liquify effect to fix the perspective. We're going to use the liquify effect to push the bottom edge of his robe upwards so that it straightens out to match the perspective of the background better. So zooming in on that portion, we use the forward warp tool, which is the first tool, and we, we use it like a brush. We get the size um, right, and we start painting like a brush, and we just push the edge of that robe upwards to straighten it out more. Once it looks okay, we commit by pressing OK. And now it's changed. Uh, he now looks like his robe is resting on the ground and we no longer have that uh, perspective error. Let's make a shadow next. And to do that, we duplicate a copy of the sorcerer layer and let's rename that as shadow immediately and drag it below the sorcerer. Next, we uh, use the move tool and we make sure we have the transform handles visible and we drag to reflect the sorcerer copy, the shadow layer, down so that it starts to resemble a shadow. We're going to drag it into place and we start scaling it with the handles. And when that's okay, again, we commit the transform. Next, we change the layer transform mode to multiply so that it looks more like a shadow. We always use the multiply um, blend mode for anything that's a shadow or to darken anything. We're now applying a Gaussian blur to the shadow layer. We want it to be a soft diffuse shadow to match the background, but we don't want to blur it too much. Um, we want to retain some of the form of the original sorcerer layer. One more blur is to be added and that is the motion blur. The motion blur sort of spreads that shadow out again horizontally uh, a little bit more. And again, it's quite a high amount, but not so much that we lose the form of the sorcerer's original um, layer. So there we have it, a shadow that's uh, a little bit more interesting than just a uh, round blob because it's derived from the original layer that's casting that shadow. Um, so here again, we are just exercising our artistic eye and we need to scale and move and adjust the shadow till it looks right. Um, this is not something that we can rely on uh, on the computer for. We have to use our own judgment um, for this. Okay, so again, I'm tweaking it. Uh, I'm just nudging it uh, because it's not looking quite right to me. 
just nudging it with the arrows up and down, left and right, till it looks right. Okay. So the third thing we need to fix is the color. And the color is basically from the background. Um, the background creates the ambient color and light, which colors your foreground subject. So we duplicate the background layer, rename it color, and drag it right above the sorcerer layer. Uh, it's, we've lost the sorcerer layer because the background duplicate is now sitting above it. We blur this color layer to a very high amount because we are not interested in the details on the layer. We are only interested in the color from the layer. So blurring it reduces all the detail and it gives us only color which is what we want. We want all this color from the background to influence the sorcerer. So in order to do that, we need to change the transfer mode again, the blend mode to overlay, and immediately the entire illustration just blends together beautifully because of this color layer. However, we don't want that. We want the color layer to be clipped inside the sorcerer layer. So we clip it in there with the option, option key held down, and now you can see that um, the saucer really does look like he sits in that uh, photograph quite well. The colors do seem to match much better now, um, all without any color adjustments, just simply grabbing the colors from the background. Now what I'm doing now is I'm going to move that duplicate color layer um, such that I can get some of that orange tint from the leaves overhead to cast um, on his hood. So it looks like that orange color is just spilling onto his head. And that's looking pretty okay. Now let's um, have a look at that bottom edge again. This is something that uh, we might need to fix again with the liquify because I'm, I'm finding that the, the edge is just not flat enough. It doesn't feel like it's really resting on the ground. So I'm going in here to further tweak that bottom edge. I'm trying to flatten out um, that edge even more to make it look like it's sitting on the ground and I, I'm probably going in with a smaller brush, a, a smaller size brush for the forward warp tool, um, just in the corners, right, just to get it tight. There we go. And that looks, yes, that looks a lot better. Uh, we need to adjust position of the sorcerer layer and Let's make sure he's really sitting on it. Okay, the final problem when you zoom in close onto a layer that's composited on top of another is you often see this white fringe. Um, and we can fix that by going to Layer, Matting, Defringe. And we can set the width to about one pixel, which is about that pixel width of that fringe. And when we say OK, you can see that it blends beautifully. That white gap is gone. And now when we zoom out, you can see our work is pretty much complete in terms of compositing. It looks great. Um, we can adjust it a little bit more uh, by shifting that color layer. Um, and again, we're just doing all this by eye to, to make it look right. OK. Final adjustments and um, just making that shadow a lot wider because it's a very diffuse environment that he's in. So it's got this very big soft shadow around him and it's done. So the last thing we want to do is um, we're going to do something very interesting. We can change the pose of our character um, and we can repose him to a certain degree um, using the puppet warp. We're going to move those arms with the puppet warp tool. So selecting the Sorcerer layer, we go up to the Edit menu and we go to Puppet Warp. Now while we're in Puppet Warp, we have to move um, straight away into the Sorcerer layer and start placing these pins by clicking. Now these pins are very unique. They, they act as a control point as well as a stabilization point. So it's very important that we, we, through experience, 
figure out where to place these pins because it's very important where we place these pins. I'm typically placing them on the joints of the character and on the points of the character where I need control. So now with the pins placed, I can actually mouse over and click on any pin and grab it and move it. And like magic, the character is going to deform and follow that pin while all other pins will stabilize the other parts of the layer so that they don't move. So this gives me a lot of control. I can again tighten down that hem, uh, that robe, and I can grab his hands and open up the pose a little bit just like that. Or I can shift click on um, more than one pin. And like in this case, I'm grabbing both pins and I can move his hand entirely behind his back and then adjust the elbow. Do the same for the other side. And bring that down and bring that elbow in. And suddenly I have a, a whole different pose than what I started with. I mean, I didn't even draw it in this position. And now with the puppet tool, I'm able to create a pose that's entirely different. Press on the check to commit. And there we go. We have Sorcerer looking uh, very different with a, with a different performance right now. And that's it. Thanks for watching.